Welcome back. You're tuned into the My Cool Inventions Network. This segment is called Selling Secrets. Maybe you're an entrepreneur. Maybe you're a product developer. Maybe you're an inventor. We all come here and try to teach you a little bit about how to move your product, how to get on the market, how to get started, how to get moving. Now, Andrew, how many times have we had an inventor on here yep. who's got a great idea? I'm like I had one, the, the, the reversible umbrella. The guy invents the reversible umbrella. Cool. Files for a patent hundreds of thousands of dollars later, but hasn't made one. <laughs> Not a single <laughs> one. So I got him on the phone. I go, dude, you got to make one. You know, seriously, how many inventors need to get one? Because if you have one, it's easier to sell. You know, a drawing is harder to sell than when you're holding something in your hand. Now, the sure, cool thing, absolutely. now, when you and I get started, right? Yep. I mean, what do we have to do? Carve something out of a block of wood? I mean, seriously, we have to, we have to, you know, back in the old days, we're old enough to remember we had to do it the old fashioned way. But today, one of the coolest things that are happening is 3D printing. Okay. Mm -hmm. And by the way, when I first saw 3D printing, uh, I was so impressed. I went to a place, I don't know, they paid like 20, 30, 40 grand for this 3D printer. And the guy was making uh, a Lego or something. And I thought, wow, that's cool. Uh, what's it for? I think it developed into, I've seen houses being built by 3D printers. Well, yeah, you're right. Amazing. And the prices come way down. So, Amazing. So, and you know what else you need? You need a, like a real expert at 3D printing. Now, we've got a, yeah. one of our inventor representatives, Mike Karuf, is on the line here. And let's get him back on the program. Mike, welcome back to uh, My Cool Inventions Network. Thanks for having me back. So tell me about 3D printing. What's going on in 3D printing, and how is this such a great tool for inventors? Okay. So when you have an idea, and, and you, before you make it into a product, when, you know, like you said, before you had a carbon out of wood, um, if you wanted a good representation of your product, you'd, ha you'd have to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on a mold. Right. right. What 3D printing does is allows you to make a tangible product in days rather than weeks. So days what rather than... What it allows you to do is cost-effectively make iterations of your product and test. So do you have, do you have 3D sure printing in your... Works. Do you have 3D printer in your shop, though? Uh, there's, there's a lot of things that you could do So, so uh, Tony, one, it pulls audio back a little bit, so he's not mu um, like, like, mu like he's a little muffled there. So, do you have Mike a three D printer in your shop? We we have twenty five. You have twenty five three D printers in your shop. Yes, sir. Wow. Do you have one behind you? Can 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 we see one? Is there something we can actually see? So that's it. He's got one behind him there. If you're watching the video, he just walked back away from his mic, and he's got one back there. It doesn't look very big. So do they come in different sizes, Mike? Do 3D printers come in different sizes? Andrew mentioned yeah. uh, Andrew yeah, mentioned they're building houses with them. In oh, he's Oh, okay. So that's a bigger one behind you. Wow. You have 25 3D printers there. Now, uh, Steve Warpal, are you still there, Steve? If you are, just a message there. Um, now, he's looking for a prototype. He's got some invention probably, and he wants a prototype made. So what does it take to get you guys to make a prototype? So you get an NDA. So what he said. So what he said. He said you have to have a non-disclosure agreement, an NDA. Is that what you said? Yes, sir. All right. So that's what that means. If you're not, if you're listening, what that means is is it protects the inventor. Mike just basically promises not to share that idea with anybody. He's not. You're, you're not going to. It's mutual, probably two-way NDA. You're not going to reveal any secrets that Mike might give you. So basically, you're bound. It's like the cone of silence and get smart. Wow. <laughs> Start coming down on you. Right. Okay, so you got the NDA prop. Now, what happens next? Okay, so after the NDA, you'll pitch your idea to me. And what we'll do is to gauge what, what could be included, what, what needs to be product made. Okay, so your, so your audio, Mike, your, Mike, like, your, Mike, your audio is coming. So your mic, your audio is coming in garbled a little bit. So uh, uh, why don't you repeat that for me again? So, so what we do is when you come in for a consult, we'll talk about your idea. And we'll, tr we'll look at your idea and see what we can improve, what could be done differently, and what else could your invention be used for. Now, consequently, 
sometimes an invention, you know, an invention that comes in for one thing works better as something completely different. It's kind of having, nice having fresh eyes on a project like that. So basically what you're doing, the, I, I, I want to repeat what you were saying, just in case on the radio, if you're driving around, you didn't hear Mike. So you go into his place, he does a consultation. Uh, obviously, these guys are really, really uh, uh, professionals, and they have a lot of uh, experience in these inventions. So he consults with you. Maybe he makes the right improvements, um, because now he's looking at it from a manufacturer's point of view and a prototyping point of view. So you give him a consultation and try to help improve the invention. Have I got that right? Okay, good. So what happens next? Okay, so after we get the invention portion done, and we start, talk, we start talking about feasibility, manufacturability, can you make this in mass quantity? Uh, then we start has designing the product. So we'll actually physically make your product in 3D. We even free software. So you've got this great... So from a visual standpoint, we can start seeing things in at that point. All right, I'm going to repeat it. I'm going to repeat it again, Mike, because I know your like, like audio is a little challenging. So, so basically, you've got this great software. So you've got a team of experts who now design and lay out the drawings and the software so that 3D machine can start working properly, right? Yes, that's correct. Is, is it audio better now? No, it's worse. It's worse. So we're looking at the video. So what, what appears to happen? Who does the drawings? I mean, who's the one who who takes the inventor's idea from maybe a patent or a prototype idea, drawing on a napkin or something, and and then who who physically makes those super uh, you know programs that the runs the three D machine? Who does that? So we have we well, myself and we have in in house um, CAD designers that work work with us. So a CAD designer. Uh, takes the idea, and then you guys develop it into a software, and I guess then what happens is the 3D printer, after it's perfect, spits out a prototype. That's correct. Wow. And how much does that cost someone? I, like, I, don't, I, I actually have no idea yeah. uh, how much it costs. In fact, in fact, let's just use as, as a typical example. Steve Warple, these are the Glide guys, really super smart guys. They're furniture movers uh, invention. There are these little glides. Now, he's got a two and a half inch glide for bed. So what he wants to do is create a prototype for a two and a half inch glide. Uh, it goes like a silicone thing that goes under the bed. Uh, how much would that cost him to get from start to finish on a prototype? looking at it, 3D printing is priced out by size. Okay. So the bigger the product, the more expensive it costs to make. Um, a glide for a bed would probably only take us a few hours to design, um, and we probably wouldn't have to go through mul uh, multiple generations. So the design time would actually be, you know, a minimum. Um, so cost, you know, the cost of it would be, you're probably looking at anywhere between 250 to 500 for design. Okay. Um, the 3D yeah. print itself for a pad that goes underneath a bed that's relatively small could yeah. be anywhere from 5 to $50 at the most, depending on what material you're using. So, did I just hear you correctly? It's basically 200 to 500 bucks for a, for a prototype of this? That's correct. Oh, that's pretty oh. cool. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Hey, if an inventor, an inventor wanted to get a hold of you and to talk to you about, consult with you about these uh, prototypes, how do they get a hold of you, Mike? They, they can go to my website, which is uh, 3dprintfl.com. So 3dprintfl.com, is that what you said? That's correct. Uh, Tony, you want to put that up there for us? A 3dprintfl.com. So that's cool. So there's the Steve's answer. So Steve, uh, you know, a couple hundred bucks, I guess, uh, maybe up to five, depending on how much design work is involved. Um, that's cool. Maybe we'll use you for some prototyping because uh, that's a great, uh, that's a very reasonable price. Yeah. I love that idea. Um, the other thing I want to ask you: How big can you get? Like, like Andrew said, they were printing houses. So how big can you get? What? Well, generally speaking, if you're going that large, you're probably not in a 3D print anymore. 
Wow, six feet long. Three. Wow, that's wow. huge. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. So you guys, I guess you can get big prototypes. Next time I want a prototype canoe, I'm coming out to you. <laughs> on there. Okay, Steve Warple just asked, wow. what if the invention, he's asking about his glide, that bed glide he was talking about, it has four parts. Now, I think I know this glide because it's got, he's got a way to prevent the angle. He takes in consideration any angles. So how much would it cost if the, if the invention had four parts to it? Do you think, how much more would it cost, uh, Steve, to do that? Um, multiple pieces. It's, it's just about clearancing the pieces together. Okay. Um, without giving Steve's invention over the phone, um, it doesn't necessarily cost more. It's just depending on how everything fits together. Okay. So, so uh, Steve, uh, why don't you contact Mike directly, uh, 3dprintfl.com. Uh, maybe, uh, Tony, you can connect email addresses or something to these guys, too, all right? On there. Actually, throw this, if, you, if you don't mind, let's throw your email address for all the inventors to see. Uh, yeah. Mike, what's your email address? My name is 3 at gmail.com. 3D Print f- Florida, spelt out, Florida? Yes, sir. 3D print Florida at gmail.com. Throw that up there too, Tony. That's pretty interesting. Yep. So there you go, Very inventors. Cool. It's uh, it's not a big threshold. I thought, I actually, honestly, gosh, I thought the guy was going to say two, three grand. Yeah, me too. 500 bucks. It's like two, five, two to 500 bucks. That's, what? That's what I'll throw some right work there. at you too, Mike. I got yeah. all kinds of ideas for two, three, 500 bucks. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And then, wow. We learned something about 3D printing. Yeah, we did. Hey, Mike, thanks very much for being on the program. That's an awesome, awesome uh, uh, little, uh, you've inspired us right now. So all you inventors, get inspired. You know, maybe you got something on a piece of paper. You want to do a prototype? Because prototypes matter. You put something in somebody's hand, you can sell it quicker, sell it easier. You're, You're way ahead of the game. So there you go. Selling secrets, how to do a 3D printer. And by the way, if you're an inventor, you want to get on our program, submit to My Cool Inventions. Hit the submit button because maybe you have the next $100 million idea.